Hi, this time I wanted to talk about systems and genres in tabletop role-playing games. Specifically, which one should be given priority, the system or the genre? Okay, first and foremost, in the best case scenario, you have a role-playing game that has the genre and the system that you enjoy playing. When you are gathering your players to play a one-shot or even a campaign, you obviously want a tabletop role-playing game with the genre that you all enjoy and the system as well. Maybe you enjoy a simple system, maybe you enjoy more complex systems or something in between. That's great. And of course, you, you want a particular genre that will allow you to represent or recreate or rather live or experience the the sorts of situations that are common in that type of genre. But what if you have a tabletop role-playing game with a genre that you enjoy, but the system is not exactly your cup of tea? But maybe you have another role-playing game with the system that you would enjoy playing normally. Like I said, maybe it's a complex system, maybe it's a simple system, or maybe it's more related to the mechanics. Maybe it's a dice pool system or a roll a single die system or a couple of dice, etc. There are many possibilities. So which one would you give priority to? In my case, I have already made up my mind whenever that is throughout the years, whenever, whenever I encounter those situations, I always give priority to the theme, to the genre rather. Of course, you can also consider the themes, but the genre itself be it fantasy, science fiction, Wild West, modern horror, etc. And of course, there are subgenres. And like I said, it gets a bit more complex. If you consider that there are themes within those genres and subgenres, I would still recommend that you give priority to the genre or subgenre. Because I have found it that players are usually more enthusiastic about learning systems even if they are not particularly um, encouraged or yes to, to to into a certain system like a complex dice pool system or perhaps a diceless system they are willing to put the effort just because they are so in love with the genre you can also see this in popular intellectual properties you see role playing games for all sorts of popular movie series or books or etc and players are even they are willing to put up with the more even if the system is quite absurd they are willing to put up with it because they want to pay, to play the official tabletop role playing game and of course companies usually take advantage of this piece milling the product as much as they can not in all cases but in a lot of cases they take those uh, beloved intellectual properties and they divide a book into several splat books or they make you buy the same book like three times because half of it half of the book is the same material but it has other materials representing a particular section of the timeline within the series the movies etc so yes it's quite terrible but like i said it doesn't happen in most in all situations for example i am very impressed on how Free League Publishing has been handling Alien. Amazing. The core book is everything that you need. Everything else is just an expansion of that. It is not something that completes the game. It is just it's extra stuff if you want to uh, further enjoy the version that Free League is putting out. Free League is doing a terrific job overall, in my opinion. But okay. Like I said, I prefer to give priority to the genre or in some cases, like I, like I mentioned, maybe it's a particular intellectual property because players are usually more yes, enthusiastic, willing to learn a system that otherwise they wouldn't even touch. But I would love to know your, your experience on this. Have you encountered a situation where the player gives, or rather the group, gives priority? To the system over the theme or genre or whatever or intellectual property let me know in the comment section i also wanted to talk about uh, being mindful of how representative a particular tabletop role-playing game is about uh, genre subgenre etc 
A few decades back, it was so easy, there were very few tabletop role-playing games, but nowadays we, we have so many. There are some, even considering the indie releases, there are so many tabletop role-playing games, but not all of them uh, fulfill a promise when they are telling you that this game is representative of a particular genre or subgenre, sometimes they fail miserably at that. Let me, let me give you an example. I think that there is an emergent, at least compared to, like I said, perhaps 10 years ago, there is a certain emergence of a new genre, I would say, the video game tabletop RPG genre. Tabletop role-playing games that are trying to represent these sorts of tropes and situations and even sometimes the mechanics that you would expect to see in a video game. Very specific, and that is in very specific ways. We are not talking about the OGL Dungeons and Dragons, like uh, handling that system within g video games such as Neverwinter Nights. It's not about that. It's more, more like a, a video game experience that is trying to be represented in, in the tabletop environment. So let's say I will give you a negative example and a positive example. I am currently reviewing Fabula Ultima and it is a complete failure when it comes to representing Japanese video games in ta tabletop RPG format. Terrible. If you go past the awful explanations in that tabletop RPG, there is a decent system there. But I, I would consider it a case of false ad advertisement because the beyond the art, beyond the aesthetic aspect, that is the cool looking illustrations and all of that, there is simply nothing that makes me think this is the tabletop RPG that I would use to represent Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, etc. So terrible, terrible example that is uh, an unfulfilled promise. But then we have Fight. I'm going to put my review of Fight in the description. It's an old review from my time when I was doing these really long reviews before uh, cutting them into multi-part reviews. Fight is pretty much the ultimate fighting video game turned into a, a tabletop RPG experience. You have your super attacks, your air dashes, you have your meter that is being filled up, you have moves that are pretty much inputs in a controller or using your arcade pad, that is, the moves are armed or rather built in the system as button presses, you know, the typical fireball, down, uh, down, forward, forward, punch. That's how you build the moves. It's so thematic, so strong. That's the way in which you can handle a, a video game transformed into tabletop RPG sort of experience. It's perfect, beautiful. So I hope that you will be careful when choosing your tabletop RPGs. Make sure that they are actually representing the genre that they are promising through their imagery, through, through their blurb that oh this is the game that you want if you want to play weird west science fantasy situations or something make sure that it has those elements those mechanical and thematical elements to represent that genre or subgenre but again i want to repeat the question uh, do you think theme or system should be given a which one should be given a priority the theme or the system when it comes to choosing a tabletop rpg like I said, putting aside the best case scenario where you have both the system that you like and the genre that you like, I would love to know your thoughts on that and your thoughts when it comes to uh, genres in general and systems in tabletop RPGs, anything that you can think of. Well, uh, thank you for watching this video and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you, and see you later!